Hey and welcome to Never Enter with Aragon. So in this video I'd like to show you my DPS build for my Paladin. Now as a Paladin we don't actually have a Paragon path dedicated to DPS so we'll have to go ahead and do our best to make up a build to give us this extra damage for solo content to help you along with questing and make it a whole lot smoother experience so that you can kill those enemies faster. So the aim for this build is yes to maximize our damage output with combination of our powers, our stats, companions and so on and I shall go through all of them throughout this video. So initially I'm going to jump to our powers and what kind of combination we want to be using with our feats and class features. Well what I have set up here is generally what I use. Now as our at will power I'd like to use our old strike to give us that AoE at will and this is something that is superior to if you went on the Oathkeeper build. You wouldn't have an AoE at will. Then our encounters, they're pretty much all the same. However, again, in Oathkeeper, you don't have Relentless Avenger, which is a nice high magnitude single target power. But again, it is single target. You might want to switch to something like Burning Light when you're against more mobs and you know you're constantly going to be against lots of mobs but I find a lot of the time when you jump into encounters you're always going to have this one pesky tanky mob so it's handy to have a cooldown power like Relentless Avenger which you can just rush in and deal a decent amount of damage to them. So yes this is generally my AoE setup using Bane, Sacred Weapon and my Relentless Avenger. You use Sacred Weapon ideally before you actually initiate a fight because it will give you this extra 52 magnitude on pretty much all your attacks. So whenever you hit something let's say with Bane it will deal an additional 52 magnitude as well as the magnitude from Bane being 620 there. Meaning it's a whole lot easier to let's say one shot enemies, one shot or two shot them with only like one or two casts of Bane and this is what the setup of this build is. To try and basically one shot your enemies. Try and get rid of like all the pesky minion mobs straight away and then you're left with let's say one or two big guys like the trolls and that's what you'd use Relentless Avenger to finish them off with and then you can alternatively switch to let's say smite especially when you're doing let's say solo questing and you run through like a lair like we have the granny neck snapper in lair here now you might want to switch to smite when you're fighting her to then give you that extra single target damage there with a nice high magnitude. Then of course daily powers you're just using these two. This one in single target, this one in AoE. I generally like again just keep my divine judgment for some big pesky mob that you just want to kill straight up. That tankier one. Class features. Sure if you're solo you may as well be going with Blessed Wanderer. It doesn't take into consideration your companion which is handy. I also like to run with Aura of Wrath to buff up that critical rate so you can critically hit enemies a whole lot easier. It's really great when you run up with a Bane and it just crits and kills everything. That's just awesome so we may as well use this Aura to help make sure we get this crit. Alternatively of course you could run with like Aura of Vengeance or, or even our Divine Retribution giving you that extra damage when your shield decreases. Then with our feet set up, I like to run with Baneful Strikes there, giving you those extra free casts. And it's again another huge thing that's over the Oath Keeper, giving this free cast of Bane. And it's only really good though when you're, let's say, in a longer fight, so when you actually need that. Third set of feet here, doesn't really matter. Divine Pursuit is good for longer fights again, give that extra Divinity Regen. Again, the fourth set here doesn't particularly matter whatsoever shield of the gods why not and again the last two don't matter either you might want to go and yielding champion instead here because it might give you some more survivability but again you'll have to use your divinity to use that tab power which you might not want to do and this intimidating presence gives me a nice angel wings like this here so i just use it because they look pretty cool. So now we'll move to our statistics. What statistics do we want to have to maximize our damage? Well, these ones here are offense stats primarily. Initially, you want to increase this base damage to as high as possible. Our base damage is literally the equivalent of our total item level 
divided by 10 and that's it. As a healer we would get 10% more and as a DPS we would get 20% more. I'm currently a tank so we're losing 10% there. So that's like 10% overall damage. And that's why arguably you might want to use the Oath Keeper instead of the Justicar for your DPS build. I'm just more comfortable with the Justicar. So with our main stats. For solo content, you ideally want to be capping out this power as high as possible along with your critical strike and critical severity and then looking at our accuracy. The reason I would prioritize critical strike and critical severity over let's say accuracy or combat advantage in solo content is due to the fact that mobs are a lot more squishier and you can normally go and one shot or two shot them with let's say one or two casts of bane and to make sure that you actually get those banes to critically hit you would up this chance to as high as possible as i currently have it set up here so this is pretty much as high as i can really get my stats while not within combat with procking up let's say the whisperer's hood of the quiet to get more accuracy or even my perfect vision to get even more accuracy now Least of all, I would prioritize combat advantage as it's not very often when you're running solo that you will have combat advantage. Sure, you might get combat advantage with flanking with your active companion, but I don't overly rely on it. But I do try to get that combat advantage when you're against a boss. As this combat advantage, as we have here, will increase my overall damage by 44.6%. So you would want to try and obtain that benefit when you can but it's not going to be something you can obtain all the time so you want to prioritize these other stats and that's pretty much it for our stats so we move on to the gear again what you want to be prioritizing is nice high item level gear however there are a few exceptions for example this shirt the ebony stained raid shirt now again, since you won't be in the fights for very long, it's unlikely that you'll decrease your stamina below 75%, meaning you will have this increase to damage of that 3%. So this is a decent buff and definitely makes up for the loss in item level that you do get for slotting in this shirt. Along with that, there's also these rusted iron leggings that you ideally want to get from Fallen House, giving you that 5% extra damage. Now, you will reduce your incoming healing, so I don't recommend running in party content, but again, as solo player, you generally want to kill things quicker than they kill you, so it should be all right there. We're not particularly going to heal ourselves very much, so this negative incoming healing doesn't really matter. So as for the rest of things, now the set I would prioritize is this Lost Mat set. It's really good with giving you that extra additional hit for as it says there are 100 magnitude but it's equal to your weapon damage it's equal to this weapon damage along with that we have the storyteller journals we have three of them which also give us the exact same thing where they will do an additional hit for weapon damage on a critical hit again this is really good for one shotting those enemies again if we go and hit bane and it crits we'll get these lost mouth sets to proc and then we'll get that extra damage just straight away therefore increasing our chance that we'll one shot our target now for the rest i'm using this breastplate of the crusader to give me that extra power now uh, you can see this power is up all the time because i have a bark shield when i have a bark shield slotted you can see i have four stacks there and this effectively gives me a shield and makes this breastplate think I have a shield and gives me that power. Now, other than that, I'm also running the Lion Guard things. It also gives me power. You can see I get 20 stacks there, and they're very nice since those stacks will always remain unless you switch instants. Now, I'm also using Whisperer Sword of the Quiet, which whenever I hit or heal for 10% of my max HP, I'll increase my accuracy and movement speed. Again, pretty decent for our solo content because I'm pretty much capped in the rest. Sure, I should get some more power, just a little bit more there, but I may as well stack up the accuracy with what I have there. There are, of course, other options you can use. This is only what I have and what I deem pretty much the best 
for my build right here to maximize my damage and I'm of course using the Lionheart set again there giving me that extra damage as for my rings I'm using a Tanner's Hardened Leather Ring our hit points are still really high even though we don't really stack any and so we may as well take the benefit of this Manticore's main bite whenever we do a daily power we'll hit the next enemy for up to 50% of our maximum hit points so I just like to do this again it really helps against when you're soloing against bosses or some really tanky enemy and we're using on our left ring just uh, a ring with our encounter perk to increase the damage that yeah our vein does or our smites so that's pretty much it for gear so now we go to our enchantments what do you want to be running well in solo content i highly recommend gigantic enchantments increasing your critical strike your accuracy and your critical severity power rating is again pretty easy to cap out especially with the gear that i have and thus i'm not prioritizing that as my enchantments but again enchantments are really such a minor thing the stats they give you are so insignificant to your overall build you only really want them for the item level. This would definitely be something I would prioritize as pretty much the last thing in any build. So in offense, I suggest gigantics. In defense, again, it doesn't really matter. Just kill things before they kill you, but you could just slot radiance there. Now in our utilities, we ideally want those dark enchantments, just increasing our forte. As our just car or oath keeper, we will have the benefit of critical strike as our offense forte stat, giving us that extra critical strike chance which is pretty neat and then going to our armor and weapon enchantments in our armor enchant as i mentioned you ideally want a bark shield if you're running the breastplate of the crusader there are of course other other alternative enchantments you could be running you could go with the negation you could go with the elven battle doesn't really matter it's not really going to increase your damage by a whole lot you could also run some offense ones like our Lone Weave or a Fire Burst, but they're not going to do much damage whatsoever, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. In our main hand, I like to run with a Vorpa. Of course, if you're running in AoE, you might also want to switch out to, let's say, our Lightning Enchantment. But overall, the Vorpa will do just fine. It helps me cap my stats. Sure, not overly necessary. The Lightning is really nice in combination with like our Oath Strike at will getting those nice procs off for 60 magnitude damage. I just like my stats looking good, so I'm going to keep that Vorpal slotted for now. So that's it, now we go to modifications. Now in our gear here, you could be running with power, you could be running with critical strike, or you could be running with like critical severity. Doesn't particularly matter, whatever you need to get these stats nice and high. Then in our neck, waist and rings, I'm running with combat advantage there as that's the only real jewel that's going to help you out there. Then for our weapon modifications, of course, you just want your enhanced oath strike in the main hand. And in the off hand, I like to run with just whatever stat you need here to help cap it out. So critical strike there. Forte is also pretty neat to give you that extra. Again, it will give you more of that critical strike percentage, but it's such a minor amount, 500. So now we move to our race and our ability scores. Well, initially our race, what do you want to be choosing? Well, I wouldn't really pick a race based on what damage you want to be dealing in solo content. Just pick a race that you need for, let's say, tanking or healing as our main rows within combat. So you could just take like the Dragonborn, the Human, Half-Orc, Asmar, Gith, Wood Elf. There are loads there that will help with damage. And yeah, just take whatever suits your fancy. That's what I say works best for a paladin or pretty much any character. So we go to our ability scores. Now, what I'm using here is dexterity and charisma. Of course, arguably you could use intelligence to buff up our magical damage as most of our powers, actually I think nearly all of our powers are magical and will benefit from it. So now we move to our companions. As our summoned companion, I like to run with Xuna. Of course, there are all other alternatives you could run with the air archon the cold iron warrior lightfoot thief for single target 
Owlbear just as an augment to give you more offense stats. Second pass or the income pass just to give you that extra initial damage. She's really good for when she blows her kiss at the beginning of the fight. It does like a huge amount of damage and she can one shot enemies pretty easily. And she'll also give them a vulnerability so if they're not dead you'll increase your damage by 10% against those enemies. But I just generally like to run with Xuna as she's a good all-rounder giving good decent AoE damage along with single target damage. And it's really nice that she'll do her bloodbath, her big damage power, at the very beginning of a fight. So if you go and resummon her between every group of mobs, you can get big bursts of damage nice and quickly. Now for our companion equipment, just run with what you need as what I've mentioned in the stats section. I'm running Accuracy along with indomitable runestones to give me more damage to my companion. Now again in our enhancements here I'm running perfect vision to give me that extra accuracy. Sure it might not proc all the time but when it does it's pretty nice to make sure when enemies deflect my attacks that damage I deal to them isn't reduced too much. Then in offense we're using the baby deep crow. In one of our universals we're using the black dragon iron stone more critical chance. In our defense slot I'm using the phase spider more critical chance and combat advantage. Then we have the fawn there crit chance and power nice and in utility the compi for more power so that's it for companions now let's move on to our mounts here in our main slot i like to generally run with the cauldron fumes if i'm running more tougher fights that i know will last longer the buff to our accuracy and the combat advantage is pretty nice as those are two stats we don't have capped out. Cauldron Fumes is definitely one I highly recommend when you're running like skirmishes, heroic encounters, things like that where other people will also benefit from it. Of course, you might want to run something that's going to give you a big burst of damage at the very beginning of the fight to make sure you can one shot those enemies and that's when you might want to run something like divine intervention i still need to uh, level it up and put it on mythic to give it that extra damage it'll put it up to like here 1000 magnitude you could also run something like the vortex to group up the enemies and then it'll be easier to hit them all with bane things like that now of course in single target you will want to run with something like tunnel vision when you're against a boss fight or giant toad tongue lash or the golden touch all again with high magnitude single target moving on to our equip power here i'm just running armor breaker there giving me more critical severity helping me cap that stat out of course you can use whatever you have there to buff it up now in our stable here's what i'm running i'm running two gladiators go for the movement speed of my insignia bonuses one assassin's covenant to decrease my defense stats and increase my offense stats so i can do more damage and i'm using two warlord inspirations to buff up my companion's damage then for the actual insignias themselves, you can see I'm running a bunch of dominance, aggression, and some brutality, and even a skill one there. And that's just it. Just a mix that will give you the stats you need, like critical strike, critical severity, and power and also some forte which is pretty nice there as well now for the collars they don't particularly matter just the collars will give you item level so that's pretty neat you might want to run the buff to encounter damage there as the sturdy one just again so you can try and one or two shot with the bane at the beginning of a fight and then also you want to be running with like the critical severity as our wayfaring one so finally we move on to our boots again here just take all the offense ones along here i also like to take these offense ones giving you damage resistance and extra damage tier 5 i like to run with forte here and also recharge speed and the master boon i like to run with bloodlust guild boon again i'm just running critical strike there and for my defense and utility doesn't particularly matter the utility of the mount speed is pretty nice to get you moving around nice and quickly so that's going to be it pretty much now i think last thing to mention would be our consumables what food and things am i using to buff myself up well looking in my buff tab here you can see all the buffs i have and from that to gain those buffs i'm using the actual food here i'm using wildstorm elixir more critical severity watermelon sorbet more power and accuracy and superior flask of potency again 
more critical severity and my ratatouille giving me that more accuracy as my guild food. Finally you want like this forger's box. I currently don't have it leveled up whatsoever but even on green it still gives you 1.2% more power which equals more damage. Ideally I would get this ranked up and I'd nearly have my power then capped out. I guess if you are really dedicated to solo content you could use overloads as I'm using. You could use Rage of Flames to give you 5% more damage bonus and you could also use Devil's Precision giving 5% crit chance and 5% accuracy. Now I believe that is everything for my build. Hopefully it wasn't too long but let's have a quick demonstration of beating up some enemies within this new zone. And we'll go and beat up some of these trolls and these Fomorian dudes. I'll uh, make my FOV a bit bigger there so you can actually see the enemies. But you can see we have no problem whatsoever just beating up those groups of mobs. Like nearly one-shotting them all as well. But I'm going to stop the video here. If I presented this well, consider leaving the video a like. And if you're new around here, consider subscribing. And we'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.